Here's a simple little API controller called Person Controller. It has a method called Person List that calls into a repository and returns a list of people. It responds to the get verb on the route people. Let's look at the repository. So in the repository, we have a private person list that's just an I enumerable of T of the person object that we filled in a few records for. And you can see that our repository method just returns that person list just how it is. Let's see it running. So here we're using Fiddler to invoke our web API. So we'll go ahead and execute the query against people. And you can see that in JSON view, we get back the query of people. And in raw view, you can see how it actually got composed across the wire. OK, so far, so good. But what we can't do is we can't query that collection. And so that's the goal of our little snippet today, converting this into something that can be queried. Let's start by adding the OData libraries via NuGet to our solution. And here you can see that I've already done that. I've added the Microsoft ASP.NET Web API 2.2 for OData, and it added in turn all of its dependencies that it needs to function. Okay, let's change our code. First things first, we need to change the repository to return an iQueryable object instead of the iEnumerable object. You can also see that instead of just returning person list all by itself, I've added iQueryable and specified the model that's the target. And here, I'm going to switch this from being iEnumerable to iQueryable. And now the change to our repository is done. Now it's time to change our web API method person list. We're still calling the person repository people method, but now it's returning an iQueryable. We change the signature of person list from iEnumerable to iQueryable. And lastly, and most importantly, we add the enable query attribute to our method, which sets up a pipeline interceptor for OData that will parse the incoming OData syntax on the query string, transform it into link, wire it into our method, and use it to return just the data that's queried. OK, now that all our changes are done, let's go ahead and compile this. And we'll go back to Fiddler, and we'll re-execute the same query just to prove to ourselves that it still works. And indeed, we get back our same JSON list, and we get back in raw view, the same view that we had before. All well and good. We haven't broken any existing clients who might have a dependency on this endpoint. But now we can do something a little more interesting. So now let's try something a little more complicated. Here I have a little OData expression that asks for the top one of all the records. And we'll execute that. And you can see we got back just a singleton record. But we can also do more sophisticated O query queries. But we can do more sophisticated O data queries. Here's a little query that sets up a filter on the first name property to return Joe. A little happier reminder about O data syntax. The, the equality operator is EQ and not equals. Equals is, of course, reserved so, so that O data can parse out the name and value parameter from all the parameters in the list. But also um, notice that we had to quote our literal values, quote being somewhat of a misnomer, that's actually the apostrophe character. And lastly, because Fiddler's sort of picky, we needed to put in encode our spaces as percent twenties. Depending on what client you're using, you may or may not have to do that last step. So let's execute that. And if we execute it, we can see that indeed we have selected just the Joe item from the list of all of the available items. Essentially, what you've done is made the full power and syntax of OData available to any object that supports iNumerable and iQueryable of T.